place, we're going to put a Sherpa roof rack. This is the, the roof rack out of the box. Um, everything's laid out according to the instructions show what should be included into the kit. Uh, everything seems to be adding up properly. So, TW, you did a good job. Uh, instructions aren't perfectly clear in a few spots. One is, it doesn't say exactly when to use the thread locker. I'm going to assume it's going to be on the bolts that attach to the roof rack. That's these guys here. Um, otherwise, everything's counted out perfectly. There's a few leftover pieces. One of the one of the washers for the roof rack and an extra bolt. Always appreciated. Uh, but everything else is pretty good. <coughs> Tools needed are a torque wrench. This is set for 22 inch pounds. So that's pretty light pressure, um, which is probably why the Loctite is needed there. We have a uh, 13 millimeter socket, 11 millimeter socket, a four millimeter, four millimeter Allen, Four millimeter, four millimeter, millimeter Allen key. Then for the Lexus, I'm going to need 12 millimeter socket and a uh, what's this, T25 Torx and a small screwdriver to get these covers off. Silicone is optional. Uh, I've seen a few people do this. They put a few drops of silicone in the bolts where the roof racks come out. Uh, I'm not sure that's entirely necessary. I may assess that after I put in the Sherpa mounts uh, before I actually tighten them down to see if I need any uh, silicone in there or not. So um, instructions don't tell you how many of the side rails. Obviously, it's two. Um, one uh, wind fairing doesn't say how many of these crossbars come with it. Mine came with nine so sure if that's wrong you know hit me up all right next step is pre-assembly this is the wind fairing um components needed pretty straightforward i don't think i'm going to record the steps of uh, the pre-assembly probably going to focus more on the feet which is the uh probably the most thing that people will have questions on also point out a few anomalies and in instructions that don't quite follow um, real life. So stay tuned. All right, I'm on the stage now where we're going to assemble, pre-assemble the front brackets. These are the brackets that go next to the sunroof. Uh, straightforward. Uh, the only thing is the assembly instructions say to use 12 flat washers. And I don't see how. I mean, I can see using four flat washers because um, there's four bolts and four nuts. Um, and these two here come pre-assembled there. So there's nothing to do. Um, so that may be just an error. I think that should be four by flat washers, not 12. All right, this is the part where we're mounting the feet to the roof rack. We have these uh, little aluminum bushings, which are supposed to slide over the factory plastic bushings. Um, I'm wondering if this would be a good place to put silicone around the outside of these white bushings and then slide these aluminum bushings over. They don't go on easily, even spinning it. This might be a little tough. I can get it spinning it on, I can get it on. Um, yeah, they don't go on easily. Spinning is going to be the key. Maybe a little bit of lube. Um, and then this slides over the metal tubes. So the little tubes seem to slide in fairly easily into these rubbers. I suspect it would be easier to put the aluminums on these plastic things first then slide this over. Um, so the waterproofness comes in 
uh, around these holes. So I think I'm gonna apply a little bit of silicone around the outside uh, first, then aluminum sleeves, then the plastic or rubber over that. All right, I'm looking at the factory roof rack here. These are also pieces that would slide over the plastic factory uh, pieces, the bushings. I can't tell if this is some sort of glue residue, but I guess it, I'm thinking it is. There's a bit of a elasticity to it. So I'm thinking the factory had some silicone here originally also. Um, and that this was used to seal the weather out of those holes. So I feel better about putting silicone at least a little bit around the outside of these plastic tubes before sliding the uh, aluminum over it. And then this will seal uh, out the rest. Maybe a little bit of, maybe one drop on each side. So it will be compressed and uh, create a weather seal. And the thin side goes towards the inside of the vehicle. All right, that's one down. Okay, I thought I would record this last one. The other five went in, are in. Uh, the first one, these little plastic tubes were a little deformed, maybe because uh, just the way they were installed at the factory, so that the the aluminum tubes were a little harder to put on. Um, but the other ones went fairly simply, so I just want to show you. I just bring a little bit of silicone around the outsides of these tubes and a little bit around them as well, just to help seal in these uh, rubber spacers, rubber blocks. Kind of put them on, do a little twist as you're putting them on. Yep, you'll feel it go on. There we go. And then the thin side goes inboard. And there we go. Now we're ready for roof racks. Okay. In case any of you were wondering, here's the difference between the, the factory bolt um, right here and the bolt that comes with the Sherpa kit for the roof rack mount. So there's uh, 12 of these in total. The one from factory is a little bit longer, um, but also I think the roof rack was a little bit thicker, so it makes sense. Ultimately, these will probably have the same depth as the uh, factory ones. So, uh, next step, putting these guys in. Uh, I'm going to put a little Loctite on the treads. The instructions don't say where to put the Loctite, um, but I will put the Loctite on, on these threads, probably near the bottom, just like the factory did, and um, torque it down to 22 inch-pounds, which is close to nothing. 
got the roof racks replaced on there now. This is just the rear, middle, and front. Just to get idea for placement. Notice the front one is canted back a little bit, so the top is level. Middle, symmetrical. The rear is canted forward. See the house canted forward there? That's to give room for the shark fin uh, antenna. So, well done, Sherpa. Attention to detail so far is really good. None of the bolts are in. I'm gonna put Loctite on all 12 and then drop them in. Just a quick view of the Loctite arrangement on all 12 bolts. And the torque wrench, I don't know if you can see that. 22 inch pounds. I'll tighten that up before I tighten up the wrench before I tighten up the bolts. All right, quick note on these bonded washers that go on the bolts for the roof racks. They're very snug on the bolt. And as you draw it up, it seems like it washed away a lot of the Loctite. So I'm going to put all the bonded washers on and then re-Loctite before I assemble them into the car. All right, just a word about this 22 foot-pounds. Most of these holes had leftover red Loctite, like I said, from the factory. So 22 foot-pounds came well before the bolt was even seated. So I abandoned the torque wrench and went with just a small quarter inch ratchet, 13 millimeter socket, and just pull them till it's snug, right? So I think the factory uh, is pretty specific about not over tightening. Um, just tighten them so that the, the feet are level and seated. Um, obviously it shouldn't be able to move. The roof racks are still loose. You can see, I'm trying to do this for the camera. Snug, snug, but not too bad. I'm gonna let the blue Loctite do its work. Snug, snug. I don't know if you can tell, but the, the washers have still a little bit of dome to them. So they're not pushed down all the way. It's kind of hard to tell, I know. Um, let me show you the other side. This, this side is torqued down to 22. You can see there's a lot more dome to the washers. And I think it's because the bolts are getting tight with the old Loctite and not necessarily getting tight because of 22 foot pounds. See, this is, I can turn this easily by hand. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna tighten these down a little bit. I'm gonna try to keep the feet level as they sink in with the car. And go with that. Just go with what the factory Sherpa is saying is don't over tighten. And I think with these small uh, quarter inch ratchet, they won't get they won't get that tight. They won't over tighten them. Anyway, progress is going. Looks good. All right, the side rails are on. The side rails aren't tightened down yet. So I saw a little bit of forward and backwards movement, but the roof rack bolts are tightened down. Nice and straight, huh? Very cool looking. A little bit of a wave, right? All right front mounts on. This is the adjustable one. Don't have it tightened quite yet. Give you an idea what it looks like. Now we have four crossbars in. Next is tightening the front adjustable mount. All right, I missed this detail on the first time assembly. But notice there's the word Yale in the corner. It's actually pretty small, but 
First time I had it on, it was upside down because I didn't realize there was a front and back to the air dam, but there is. Otherwise, there's no other indication you know, what this rack is other than the very cool mountain and tree symbol. All right, I kind of think I'm done. I do have two crossbars left over. But because I'm using a rooftop tent, I need room to inside between the bars, between the crossbars, in order to attach the tent. That nice level flat platform. Everything is so well machined. The, uh, in case you're wondering, the shark fin is below the level of the rack. So the tent I have is an iCamper Mini. So 55 inches. So the back of the rack will be here at this mounting point and the front of the rack uh, front of the tent will be here at this mounting point that will attach to two of the bars in the middle super happy about the uh, look finish so I could put one more crossbar over the sunroof or just behind the sunroof but I kind of like the sunroof open I could put one here in the very back. Um, maybe if I get an awning mount, I'll do that. Um, or some rooftop boxes. But for right now, I'm going to leave two crossbars off and call this done for the day. And uh, maybe give the car a wash. It's got the filth and muck. So, all right. Thanks for tagging along. Comments in the, in the comment section if you have any questions. Like if you learned something. Thank you. Bye-bye.